Good morning and welcome to this edition of San Diego People. I'm Lauren Finney. Homelessness has been a top issue in San Diego over the last several years and it's continued to grow. San Diego now has the fourth largest homeless population in the nation. This concern has highlighted the need for organizations to help those in need get back on their feet. And today we're focusing on the work of the San Diego Rescue Mission. Joining me now is San Diego Rescue Mission's president and CEO, Donnie D. Donnie, thank you so much for being here this morning. Sure, good to be here. Thanks for having us. For people who aren't familiar with the San Diego Rescue Mission, tell us a little bit more. Absolutely. Well, we've been around about 60 years. Got started uh, when a business guy from Sacramento came down to launch a uh, soup kitchen for the homeless in San Diego and have grown since then. Had a couple of properties down by uh, Petco Park and uh, lost those in the redevelopment and were able to purchase a, a facility over on Elm Street, which was the old Harbor View Hospital. That is now our facility, 100,000 square foot facility. Uh, we offer several programs. We're not a soup kitchen. We're not a drop-off facility. What we desire to do is to address the issues that are going on in a man and woman's heart that led them to a place of living on the streets. And on any given night, you're housing anywhere from 350 to 360 people? Yeah, our men's program is the largest, but we have a men's program, a women's uh, program, we have a, ch a children's program, we have a transitional housing program, we have an emergency shelter every night from 7 p.m. to 7 in the morning for just women and children. And, and all of those uh, that are in our facility total about 350, 360 men and women and children. And it's remarkable the work that the mission has been able to do for 60 years, given that it takes in no government funding. That's right. And I think it's one of the things that we just have tried to stay true to what we believe. Faith is a very important part of the recovery process. We believe that God has a plan for all of our lives. And it doesn't matter if you live in Rancho Santa Fe or you're living on the streets, that you need to explore that and understand who he is and his love for you. And we've stayed true to that. So we don't take any government funding. All of our programs are funded by the citizens of San Diego. We do some events, but it's their generosity and their support of who we are and what we do that allows us to implement our programs and make a difference in people's lives. And on a more personal note, you've only been the president and CEO for about five months now. That's correct. I got pushed into the deep end. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else because I've lived in San Diego for 20 years and have seen this move from being an issue to a problem. And I just wanted to spend whatever days I have left trying to really make this America's finest city. And as long as we have 10,000 men, women, and children living on the streets, then I'm not sure we can really call it America's finest city. So I want to be part of the solution. And I felt like the San Diego Rescue Mission was the absolute best place for me to invest my time because, because of the staff, because of the structure, because of the programs, and because we get to talk about God. Good for you. And I know we, we talked a little bit before the show about meeting the needs of the homeless versus addressing the needs of the homeless. Yeah. Expand on that. Well, as you look at what's going on in San Diego and in our county, you can see that uh, every mayor of every city is dealing with this rising uh, population of homeless folks, those that are experiencing homelessness. And I think there's a number of things that we can do. And I think that in our community, being the fourth largest homeless population San Diego is in the country, I think it's all hands on deck. And so there are some agencies that meet the needs of homelessness, and that is food, uh, that's shelter, that's clothing. But there's some agencies like ours that address the needs of the homelessness and, and of those experiencing homelessness. And for what, us, what that means is, is that you're going to be assigned a case manager. That case manager is going to build a program around all the things that you've been through with trauma, with your upbringing, with your addictions, with the lack of being able to get a job, with the lack of life skills. And over a 12-month period, we're going to walk you through a program to address the issues of your heart so that when you walk out of our facility 12 months later, you're completely different than when you got there. That, that's more than just meeting the needs. And I'm all for housing and, and feeding and clothing, but at the San Diego Rescue Mission, we really want to walk you through a program over a long period of time where you can work on the issues of your heart. I imagine before coming to the San Diego Rescue Mission, there wasn't much of an involvement with the homeless or the, the problem of homelessness in San Diego. What was the biggest surprise for you, the most overwhelming statistic or, or fact that you had to face when you stepped into this role? It's a great question and it's an easy one for me to answer because I think most of us that aren't involved daily in the issue of homelessness think that most of these men, women, and women want to be there. We think that most of them are 
trying to pull one over on us because they don't want to work, or we think that most of them are mental and have no place to go. And the reality of it is, is the majority of the men, women, and children in our facility look just like you and me. They just made some poor choices. They didn't have a great family upbringing. Uh, they have some addictions and some challenges they have to deal with. And because of that, those life circumstances, it led them to a place where they had to spend some nights on the street. Some of them short term, some of them long term. But that's the big aha for me is that these are just human beings, men and women that want to get well. Uh, by the time you come to the San Diego Rescue Mission, most of those living on the streets know that we have a lot of structure and we're faith-based and it's very organized. So by the time you get to us, you really want a different life. And that gives us an opportunity to lead them through that. And, and there have been some remarkable success stories, and we're going to hear one of them later today. Ha has there been a success story that's stuck out for you? I know it's only been five months, but yeah. there's a lot that happens in five months. Well, part of the process for us is we want to introduce them to faith. Uh, we want them to uh, go through recovery classes. We want them to talk about their family. But ultimately, when they leave, we want them to be more concerned about the community than they are themselves. We want to get them to the place to where they get back now. That to us is a success story. So we had somebody in our transitional housing program last week that gave our program director $1,000. He's been living with us. He has a job. He's saving money. He's trying to transition back out into the real world. And a part of his savings the last six months, he set aside $1,000 and, and he gave it to us. And he said, I want to support the Children's Center. We said, look, that's not necessary. We really want you to use this for yourself. He insisted because he wanted to be a part of the solution. He wanted to be a part of what we're doing at the mission. And so we took in his donation anonymously, he lives at our place, so there was no place to receive his donation and gave him a tax deduction. Wow. And I couldn't be more proud that our program worked for him and now he's at a place where he can give back. So I know it's, it's the $25 million question, but what, what needs to be done at, at the root of everything? How do we tackle such a huge problem that has just grown and been building over so many years? How do we get a handle on, on homelessness in San Diego? Well, it's, it's complicated, and I think at the mission, we just choose to deal with it one life at a time, and so that is our strategy. But I think big picture, we gotta all work together better. All of the agencies, Christian, non-Christian, um, government, non-government, I think we have to work together better. We have to figure out what our lanes are and what we're best at. And then maybe each of us just take a, a section or a portion of the, of the situation that's going on with the homeless. And I think that's a part of it. I think that um, I think we have to be more intentional about addressing the needs of the heart. I don't think it's enough to build tents and, and build affordable housing. I think that at some level, we've got to really get in there and talk about what led you to the place where you're living on the streets. I think those two things combined together strategically, I think down the road, we can look back and go, you remember how bad the homeless situation was back in the day? What happened? Well, what happened was as agencies started working together better and we were intentional about addressing the issues of the heart. Donnie D, thank you so thank much you. for being with us Absolutely. this morning. Appreciate it. Coming up on San Diego People, we will hear a remarkable success story of one man who unexpectedly found his way to the San Diego Rescue Mission. Stay with us. Welcome back to San Diego People. I'm Lauren Finney. We're talking about San Diego's homeless issue and how the San Diego Rescue Mission is playing an important role in helping those in need get back on their feet. Here with his own story of life on the streets and making a successful comeback is Joseph Schultz. Joseph, thank you so much for being here this morning. Nice to meet you. And, and for sharing your story with us because I, I think it's important for a lot of people to hear because as you were just telling me, uh, you're a college educator educated veteran. You were a JAG officer. What, yeah. what happened? When, as you might have thought about, you know, you go into the military thinking your life's going to be perfect. You are taught to react and not respond, okay? So everything became a reaction. Um, as uh, my career went on, I found out that uh, there was an issue that happened or a young man that was born to the woman that I was with, um, that I married in college, the child was found to be not mine after 23 years. And I couldn't do anything about that. Um, when she told me that the next child born in a marriage also wasn't mine, I, 
I really became distraught. Um, about three, three days after that, she took her own life, and now I really had nothing to fall back on. So I'm here in San Diego, and, and um, I had some health issues, and I went and I had a physician that I trusted and listened to, and I got addicted to opiates. I got addicted to prescription medication. And what would happen in the morning is I would wake up and there'd be 14 pill vials sitting on my windowsill. And I would take this vial, open it up, pour six of them into my hand, take the next vial, another six, and another six. I'd take those 18 pills and go back to bed till three in the afternoon. You were numbing the pain of your world being turned upside down. Right, it, it really, it, it made it, I, 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 it wasn't that I didn't want to be part of the world, I just didn't want to live in the world. And if that makes any sense, that's what a lot of homelessness is, is you don't want to be part of what's going on in the world. Um, so as, as, your, as your health started to fail continuously and the addiction grew, how did you find your way to the San Diego Rescue Mission? Well, that's what's so beautiful about it. I have um, two friends that were actually telling me, you're not the person we know you to be, okay? You know, look at what, look at you. You're not anything like what we knew you about, knew about. And they started making some phone calls. And they actually said, and uh, it was quite interesting, the, the uh, woman that I'm dating still, <laughs> being in the mission, uh, she's a local physician, and she's a very, very important person to me. And she actually locked me out of my place and changed the locks and said, you're not coming back here. And she put me on the street to humble me. And she said, we can go spend $30,000 out in Arizona for 30 days and you're not going to learn anything. And you're not going to be the person that I knew you to be nine years ago. And um, I spent, and I actually spent four nights out in San Diego, out in the streets, and it was not pleasant. And I came back, and uh, she had said, okay, this is what, this is what happens. Monday, you gotta go here. And I'm going, no, I'm not gonna go to the San Diego Rescue Mission. I heard all about it, okay? I heard it, it's rough, it's tumble, and everything, it's not, no, it's not for me. There's gonna be fights, there's all kinds of things. So, the pastor of her church, now you need to know something, that I'm, I recently gave my life to Christ on August 25th of 2017. I am a Russian Orthodox Jew by birth. Okay? And we can speak Russian if you want, but that's <laughs> not needed. But uh, I gave my life to Christ. But before that, she and I would go out to dinner and she would pray at dinner and I'd get it from the table and leave. Okay? I didn't understand what she was doing. But when her pastor came and said, I'm going to take you there, you don't have to go alone. It became a very clear message that I needed help. And that help, when you walk through the door, the first thing they do is offer you help. The second night I was there, I had a heart attack. I went to UCSD hospital. While in UCSD hospital, I contracted hepatitis A. I spent 19 days in the hospital, and you know what? They still took me back. As yellow as I was and as bad as I looked, they still took me back and they said, we're here for you at the San Diego Rescue Mission, we're here for you. And that's what it is at the Rescue Mission. It's not, you're not a number. You're an individual that want, that, 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 that they want to help. That if you want to be taken care of and you're ready to get rid of that hopelessness, then you have a home there for 12 months. And what you heard previous from, from um, Danny D, and I know you'll probably also hear from, from the pastor that's gonna speak in a little bit, Pastor Pope, the help comes from nurturing and understanding that you're an individual, you're, you're God's individual. He loves you, and he really, really knows what's best for you. You really don't. You know, what I've had and what I've been able to accomplish here at the rescue mission is just remarkable. I'm, I mean, you know, being completely disabled and walking around in a wheel, running around in a wheelchair and having, you know, now I have my little cane I walk with. That's Esther back there. But, uh, you know, it's, 
and I, I work in a therapy program, which allows me to do, you know, just some general house cleaning on the weekends, but I feel I'm doing something. And the individual learning skills and, and the lessons that you learn about life again that reprogram you to become no, no longer a hopeless person. How do, how do you think that the people who are living on the streets, and Donnie kind of addressed this, that, that don't have hope, can find their way to places like the San Diego Rescue Mission? It what, it, what needs to be done? More outreach actually well, on the streets? What people in San Diego can actually do is don't give a cash donation to somebody on the street. Uh, that's I'm going to tell you right now because it, it doesn't work. You know, I know you can't invite the person into your home, but you can give them a warm jacket and a warm meal means more to somebody living on the street. It did to me. Okay. Somebody giving you $10 or $20 or even $100, I hate to tell you this, it's not going to go where you think it's going to go. Um, those that are on the street as being hopeless, everything is right there in front of them, in their shopping cart, their clothes, their, their personal items, even their little dog. Everything's right there. They don't need anything more than that. I didn't when I was put out. I didn't need anything but what I had in my backpack. And I, I believed I could survive, and that's where it has to change, that belief system of the people on the street. You have to actually go out and talk to them. They probably aren't going to be strong enough to come to you, and they're not going to ask for any help except for money. It's addressing the issues of, of the heart, which Donnie had mentioned, and I, I so appreciate you sharing your story with us this morning, and we're so happy much. that it is a successful one we can now share. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thanks, Joseph. Still ahead on San Diego People, we'll speak with James Pope of San Diego Rescue Mission and his focus on faith and rehabilitation, especially during the holidays. Stay with us. Good morning and welcome back to San Diego People. I'm Lauren Finney. We're talking today about San Diego's homeless issue and how the San Diego Rescue Mission is working to help those living on the streets become new success stories. Here with us to talk more about services available to those living on the streets is James Pope, President of Evangelism and Discipleship for the San Diego Rescue Mission. James, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You've been with the San Diego Rescue Mission for 11 years. Yes, Talk a little bit about about your role and some of the services and how that is really important in the process for people like James we just heard from. Well, I've been really fortunate that um, when I began my career at the San Diego Rescue Mission, I was an on-call, overnight, part-time residential advisor. So basically, I watched over the house over um, in the overnight and over 200 men. I also worked in our recuperative care unit um, as the associate director, and that is uh, where folks get injured or uh, have some type of acute illness on the, on the street and go to our emergency rooms. And uh, as a result, they get services there, but then have to recuperate on the, on the street. So there was a plan to end chronic homelessness, and we partnered up with um, United Way, and we developed the unit RCU. And, uh, and so um, also I had... Um, Worked also in the thrift stores. I had some experience with Nordstrom's a year ago and uh, several years ago, and uh, so I've uh, worked with our clients and or our guests uh, at the Sanger Res Rescue Mission in so many different levels, um, and uh, and I suspect it, it's given me an, an advantage and uh, to be able to help people that are experiencing homelessness on various levels and. Um, I've, I've seen them at their worst, at the recuperative care unit, seeing someone coming in just mangled up from a car accident and then expected to recuperate on the street and then to watch um, their faith grow and then their recovery come and then take advantage of the services that are at the San Diego Rescue Mission. And, you know, we have partners all across the, the, the county. And so if we are able to connect them to the services throughout throughout the county, we'll do that in order to get them to a level of wellness that uh, they um, enjoy and then hopefully uh, a level of um, 
of the good life that they would like to receive. So, and that's different for, for each person. Some folks, they, they just do want to go back on the street, but for some, they would like to be back and with their family and friends and with a job and so on and so forth. So, There's so many different experiences and and causes that that leads to someone being on the streets mm -hmm. and I imagine having to address each one of those is a challenge in and of itself and you talked a little bit about having not only each one of us who are not homeless recognize them as individuals um, as being someone's son, someone's daughter, but then also having them realize that. And that's really where the, the, the light bulb goes off and they start to realize that they are deserving of something much better. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, a great number of people that we uh, come to our, our, our home, I'll call it, they have received trauma early on in their childhood. And for whatever reason, their brain locks and then they are stuck and they're stuck and they're stuck and they're walking around with this guilt and shame because they think it's their fault. You know, when you, you know, I have four kids, they're, they're grown now though, but um, I can't imagine any of my kids experiencing trauma at the age of four and age of five. You know, an uncle or a cousin or uh, someone on the street came in and, and uh, took some advantages of them that they ought not to have taken advantage of. You know, that was not their fault, but it has caused some, some significant trauma in their heart and in their mind. And now all of a sudden they're stuck. And so from age four on up to they can be in their 30s, you know, they've been stuck with this trauma all their life that they have not dealt with. And so that's a very difficult thing, as you had said just a moment ago, to, to recognize and identify. And so we try to, you know, with their case managers and also with psychotherapists that we uh, have also, we try to figure out what it is that, they, that, that got them to be stuck and then to unstick them. And, um, but um, most importantly, at least for me, I've, what I've seen is when the light bulb goes off and when God comes through and, and shows them that, you know, you're not whatever that trauma is and whatever that trauma is that happened to you, that was not your fault. And now let's pick up and you're my child, you know, you're my son, you're my daughter and you're a prince, you're a princess. And now rise up and, and live out the life that I have prepared for you. And so that, when that light bulb goes off, and that's one of the reasons why I really love working for the San Diego Rescue Mission, because when that light bulb goes off and they get it, I mean, there's no greater joy to see that, that light bulb go off and then living a life that they're supposed to live. I, I asked Donnie this question, and, and I'll ask you. It, it's such a huge issue on a, a large scale here in San Diego. How do we, how do we go about addressing the needs of, of each individual and helping people get off the streets when maybe some of them, as James had alluded to, don't, don't want the help? Well, they're going to tell you they don't want the help, but they actually do. And, uh, and how you'll find that out is if you actually approach them and begin talking to them. And as you talk to them, you know, find out their story. Don't tell them what you think they need. Just talk to them just like they were just, you know, somebody just welcomed into your home. And, uh, and then eventually as, they, as, as, they develop, as you develop trust with them, you know, and you might have to come back several times, you know, uh, you know you'll, you'll see somebody in the, in the storefront door, you know, open way in, and uh, just start engaging them. They say, move along, we'll move along. <laughs> but ones when they're, they're, that, are, that are ready to engage and talk with you, those are the ones that you wanna just keep coming back and visiting and sharing a meal with, sit down with, and uh, treat them as a human being. Because, I mean, we all can be there. I've had my little experiences of uh, having to couch surf, trying to raise my family at times, and, and it's just a horrible experience. And, and uh, so, to be treated well and to be loved, that does some, some great wonders, and that's where we need. We only have about 10 seconds left, okay. but I, I, but I want to know how, if you maybe know somebody who needs to be put in touch with the rescue mission, how can, how can people do that? Well, uh, just call 687-3780, and, uh, and um, we'll be more than happy to help anyone that comes to our door. The arms are always open. Yes, yes, we'll have that information on our website oh, as great, well. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, James. That'll do it for us this morning on San Diego People. Join us tonight for the KUSI News at 6, 10, and 11. We'll see you then.